young people all across the length and breadth of Jamaica would now be able to speak directly, not only to policymakers, but to the private sector, to their peers, and how much of a transformative tool this new report can be and will be. People, we urge you to tap into the U Report social messaging platform. Not only will you increase your engagement in national discussions, it will also provide you with an avenue to have your voice heard, counted, and actioned. For more information, visit unicef.org. Thanks for joining us as we turn the pages of Jamaica Magazine. Our program starts right now with a word of advice followed by the news. I'm Adrian Atkinson. Stay with us. That in a recent survey done by the OCA in schools across Jamaica, 43% of the students received inappropriate messages from strangers. The OCA wants you to be smart online. Never speak to persons you don't know. Parents, encourage your children to be social but be smart. This message was brought to you by the Office of the Children's Advocate with support from UNICEF. Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your GIS News for Monday, May 28. The Planning Institute of Jamaica, PIOJ, is anticipating further reduction in the country's poverty rate, which declined from 21.1% in 2015 to 17.1% .1 in 2016. The decline was reported in Staten's Jamaica Survey of Living Conditions. It represents a 19% drop in the incidence of poverty, the largest annual reduction in 10 years. Among the factors contributing to this is higher employment levels in the country. Data from Statin reveals a 3.1% drop in the unemployment rate for January 2018 when compared to the same month last year. Most of the decline in unemploy unemployment has been noticed, observed since 2017 into 2018. Remember we're reporting on 2016 now. So going forward, that is when you're going to see the we're expecting to see a, a more sharper decline in the poverty rate. The PIOJ's Senior Director of Economic Planning, Research and Policy Logistics was speaking at the Institute's recent quarterly media briefing. Going forward, Director General Dr. Wayne Henry says the PIOJ will be examining the multidimensional nature of poverty through the poverty reduction policy that was launched earlier this year. So it's more than just if people are working, you're looking at conditions that lead to persistent poverty and to, to, to empower um, in terms of um, the households um, to lift them out of poverty and, and hence the need for targeting in terms of um, social protection and, and economic empowerment. Government has launched a new initiative to help teenage mothers complete their secondary education. It's called Advancing Secondary Tertiary Remedial Education for Adolescent Mothers or A-Stream. The program was launched during the Women's Center of Jamaica Foundation's 40th anniversary charity ball on Saturday. Minister of Gender Affairs Olivia Grange says it will provide assistance to teenage mothers who are at risk of dropping out of school a second time. Around 70% of the adolescent mothers in our program complete their secondary education. Isn't that wonderful? But while that is impressive, we want to do even better. 
because I'm determined that no one must be left behind. Under the program of 40 adolescent mothers will be paired with 40 mentors who will assist them with critical life skills and encourage them to complete their education. Each mother will also receive $40,000 to cover school expenses, while four adolescent mothers who have matriculated for tertiary level education will receive $400,000 in scholarships for tuition. The Agriculture Ministry will be looking seriously into expanding mushroom cultivation in Jamaica. Minister Without Portfolio J.C. Hutchinson says this crop can be a game changer for the agriculture sector and a viable option for unemployed young people. And they can grow these in the backyard. And you would, you would be surprised to know that persons can make up to $30, $30,000 a fortnight. It is one of those areas where it is an extra income. You can go out in the morning, look about it, go on your business wherever you want to go, and in the afternoon come back and do it again. It is one where it can be a game changer. Minister Hutchinson was speaking at the National Mushroom Stakeholders Forum last Friday. He says the ministry will be exploring creating a program for mushroom similar to that in place for Irish potato and onion, where persons will be provided with the seeds, fertilizers, and other inputs to start production. This will be done through the ministry's agricultural push start program. This mushroom program is one that I believe in. I would like rather to take a lead in this. And I am going to be seeing what can be done as best as possible to make sure that it gets off the ground. The Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF, has increased the number of police personnel dispatched at some corporate area stoplights during peak hours. Commanding Officer of the Traffic and Highway Division, Senior Superintendent Calvin Allen, says more than 40 cops have been assigned to critical intersections. This is in addition to personnel in other areas and those who are roving. SSP Allen says similar initiatives have been done intermittently before, but a more structured approach started in February in an effort to promote better road use and safeguard the lives of citizens. He says the police have created an effective presence, which has been working well, resulting in greater order in the targeted areas. The commanding officer for the Traffic and Highway Division says the initiative will be ongoing, with the expectation that the number of police personnel assigned will increase over time. And finally, the Child Protection and Family Services Agency, CPFSA, is taking measures to strengthen fire prevention and safety at children's homes and places of safety. The agency will be collaborating with the Jamaica Fire Brigade to carry out inspections of the various homes and install smoke detectors and fire extinguishers where needed. And for us, why this partnership and campaign resonates is because Many of you may know that we've had instances of fires in our homes. And we have standards that have been set for all of our childcare facilities, but we still know that from time to time you have to ensure that you test your processes and make sure that they are up to standard. Ms. Dixon was speaking at the Jamaica Fire Brigade's Mech We Fix It campaign launched recently. She says the CPFSA will also be carrying out nightly drills to hopefully prevent casualties in fires, such as the one which claimed the lives of two wards at the Walker's Place of Safety in January. State Minister for the Youth Ministry, Floyd Green, recently updated Parliament on plans to rebuild the facility. Thus far, Mr. Speaker, we have raised almost $21 million towards the reconstruction of the Walker's Place of Safety. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. Mommy? Yes, Zoe? Can we read this book? It will only take 10 minutes. Sure, sit down. Every spring, Madame Angel Wing arranges. Do you have 10 minutes? Read with your child today. Reading with your children for just 10 minutes each day helps develop their language and listening skills, stimulates their imagination and expands their understanding of the world. So, start reading with your child today. Get your weekly dose of news coming out of the office of the Prime Minister next.
I want every single able-bodied Jamaican to commit to doing work and to commit to seeking employment over idleness or crime. Government must work in partnership with the voluntary sector. Let us ramp it up and fix it up. You're tuned to Jamaica House Weekly. I'm Lorraine Mendez. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has pledged to work with Barbados to achieve shared prosperity. Mr. Holness's commitment was shared during a congratulatory letter to the island's newest Prime Minister, Mia Motley. Motley secured all 30 seats in a landslide victory when Barbadians went to the polls on May 24. The win also means Motley is the first female Prime Minister of the Caribbean island. Calling the win impressive and historic, Prime Minister Holness says it affirms the view that Motley is a powerful force in the Caribbean, who will no doubt lead Barbados in an inclusive and transparent manner. In the meantime, Prime Minister Andrew Holness is encouraging Jamaicans to seek employment and shun crime. We are providing you with the jobs. We are growing the economy. And that is the way in which we are going to provide prosperity for all and remove poverty from our land. Mr. Holness was speaking during Wednesday's Labor Day activities at the Cumberland Road Health Center in Spanish Town. The health center, which was one of two National Labor Day projects, had its waiting area, roof, bathrooms, and kitchen repaired. Ramps and rails were also installed to increase access to the disabled community. The National Health Fund provided $2.5 million towards the project, which also included painting and general beautification of the health center. Your labor is absolutely important to the creation of wealth and prosperity for the nation. Prime Minister Andrew Holness said the government's policy of having every Jamaican involved in some form of work had led to the establishment of several programs, such as the Jamaica National Service Corps. Labor Day 2018 was under the theme, Ramp It Up, Fix It Up. The main focus of this year's activities was to install ramps and rails at schools and health facilities across the island. Work was also done to beautify communities. In his Labor Day message, Prime Minister Andrew Holness reiterated government's commitment to ensuring that every Jamaican has equal access to the state resources which will support their development. It is the goal of this government that no one is left behind and that there is equal opportunity for every Jamaican to use their God-given labor through meaningful employment to self-actualize. I've always maintained that a job is independence in your hands. Earlier in the week, the Prime Minister pledged to increase government's partnership with the voluntary services sector. Calling volunteerism an important part of national development, Mr. Holness said the sector was necessary to improve the quality of life of citizens. Volunteerism is an important part of national development. And bec not because it is a philanthropic endeavor, not because it is voluntary. It doesn't mean that it is free. What it means is that someone chooses to absorb the cost so that those who are more needy can benefit. It is the ultimate expression of selflessness. Prime Minister Holness was speaking at the recent staging of the Kiwanis Eastern Canada and Caribbean District Convention. And that's how we close out Jamaica House Weekly. Join us next time for more of the news coming out of the office of the Prime Minister. As we prepare to close out Child Month celebrations, take a look at some youngsters who are living up to their potential. My name is Jamal Hall and I am here at Monroe College at our first form science energy day extravaganza. We are trying to inculcate the use of various alternative energy sources among the first form group. Some of them are as displays where you have the wind powered, solar powered. This is Sandre, he has his piece right here. Sandre, tell me about your piece. This is a solar pressure cooker. 
it heats up when the light shines onto the file paper it heats up inside of the box and because of because the glass is here it traps it, it traps the heat and it heats up the water bottle so would you like to feel it now oh it's hot it's hot it's hot thank you all right let's move over to a wind powered house done by Sinil of form 1x good day Sinil. this is a wind powered um turbine the the wind powers the bicycle generator then it moves down to this wire and it powers the light bulb what made you choose a wind powered house um, I felt it was good because of how Monroe was breezy and it took me oh, a day to build it. What have you learned about renewable energy from the project? That it saves work energy and it prevents global warming. One of the big thrusts we have here is to ensure that we stimulate an interest in the sciences from very early. So once the kids come in first form, it's a way of stimulating that natural intellectual curiosity and interest in the sciences, particularly alternative energy that the school is very passionate about. And it all ties into this whole uh, thrust towards uh, what we call STEM education, which is science, technology, engineering and mathematics. And it really is a part of a broader thrust by the school to ensure that it's deeply engendered in the boys and there's this real interest and drive and passion that they have. Hopefully they'll go on to become scientists themselves. We'll now be moving over to a solar powered car. Let's see how that works. We um, use a plastic bottle, four tires from an old toy car, and the rechargeable battery with a three volt solar panel which and a 1.5 voltage motor inside the car. With the solar panel takes power from the sun, send it to the battery, and the battery powers the motor. What exactly did you learn from doing this, this project? Renewable energy is more efficient than um, fossil fuels. We are here with Lawton Lewis and his solar powered car. Now Lawton, tell us something about this vehicle. Okay, this vehicle runs off of solar power, mm -hmm. right? Run, it equal, all of these solar panels equal to 20 volts, 20. right? Um, two motor power the front wheels and one motor power the back wheel. Reason being because the front is heavier than the back. Okay. Right? The whole frame of this vehicle mm -hmm. is made out of um, plywood. Up next is a, is a homemade solar water heater and the person responsible for this is my friend here, Vernon. Vernon, tell me exactly how does this work? We use irrigation pipes to hold the water. We have used the, sol the, the sun's rays to, to generate the heat of the solar water heater, which heats the water. These green plastic things, they are couplers, which I used to connect into these long, these columns. Co-curriculum programs such as this you know, is deeply uh, rooted in the concept of project-based learning. Yeah? And so we're stepping away from uh, the talk, uh, chalk and talk and now towards a system in which students are actively engaged in the process of learning. I believe that students learn not only from theoretical knowledge but through practical application. And I thought it fitting as a teacher who experiments a lot in the classroom to not only teach the concept energy but also to allow students to exercise some um, practical work and from that they will better understand the concept. So in some sense, practical application concretize theoretical knowledge. This um, assignment was also weighted towards their end of year exam. So it has a 20% weighting. This I think is very interesting for first formers. So it's like an SBA component of their final exam. Now it's time to check out my masterpiece. Let's go. Okay, this is a solar powered company. Now, everyone made houses, but I decided to make a company that could be later on used, meaning that it could develop to something bigger. Here, I have my solar panels, and if the, if the sun shines, heats up these two panels and then the, the light inside the house
turns on. The benefits of solar is basically it is healthier, it's cheaper. They are more cleaner and release less pollutants in the atmosphere than other energy forms. I found out that green energy is the best energy and that solar panel isn't there and it's better than using the normal electricity. This whole day is basically about the use of renewable energy and we are just so glad that you could be able to stop by and see what we have to share and, and now we can spread to the whole world what you can achieve using renewable energy sources. Stop. Think before you burn. The dry season is on, so there's little to no rainfall and wind speeds increase around this time too. What if the fire you light gets out of control? Where would you get the water to out the flame? Why not try bagging up waste and putting it outside for collection? If you absolutely must burn, construct a fire break by clearing an area around the site to be burnt. Use water to wet the perimeter of the brush being burnt. Burn in small piles and be sure to burn one pile at a time. If no water is available, ensure you have some dirt to douse the fire. Remember, take stock of yourself and think before you burn. We are a few days away from the official start of Disaster Preparedness Month in June. So, as we ramp up our awareness programs, we show you how you can help to prevent fires. In the case of a fire at your home, should you A, stop to get your pet, B, evacuate immediately and call the fire brigade from a neighbor's phone, or C, stop to call the fire brigade? The answer is B, evacuate immediately and call the fire brigade from a neighbor's phone. Many students know the answer to the question simply because a fire prevention officer went to their school and gave them the drill. When your clothes is on fire, you do not run. So you stop where you are, you fall to the ground, and you roll. Public education is a key component in fire prevention. It is a proactive method of reducing emergencies and the damage caused by them by ensuring that the public is fully aware of what to do in case of an emergency. We recognize that fires start most of the time because people don't know about fires. People don't know what it takes to make a fire. People don't know what it takes to get rid of a fire. Without educating a person about the dangers of fire, then they would be um, totally lost and we will continue to have devastating fires destroying life and property. Look around for me. Make sure that everybody in the class is here. I think you should give yourselves a clap. Fire prevention officers go into communities, businesses, schools, churches, wherever they are granted access and educate the public on fire safety practices. And through programs like safety monitor and training, persons are taught to educate others about appropriate fire safety behavior. We go into communities, we train what we call community safety wardens or fire wardens, so they would, they would now look at the mispractices. We go into businesses, organize the staff, and we train persons to train the people in the workplace. They are also trained to a point where they can check for hazards to ensure that all the fire hazards that are, that are visible can be reduced. If it is that you require of us or you ask of us to come into your home and show you what inside there can actually start a fire and how you can prevent that fire, we actually do that. And we promote as well what we call a good neighbor policy. So you ensure that your neighbor is not doing anything that will put your life in jeopardy from, from a fire and you do the same as well for your neighbors. What happens? Fire prevention does not stop at public education. There is also engineering and enforcement. You could call it the triple E effect. 
Engineering and enforcement go hand in hand. It's at this stage that the Fire Prevention Division review building plans, inspect buildings and assess for compliance. We encourage you to come in to us, submit your building plan. We are able to look at it to see how you are going to occupy the building and then we will be able to recommend the type of devices that you would use to better protect your, your, your property and the lives that will occupy that building. Fire prevention officers should be contacted to conduct fire safety inspection as soon as new buildings are erected or existing buildings are being renovated. There is no cost attached. So you, you, you would write us a letter and you can send it in to us by email. Uh, when we get that letter, we set a date with you. We come into your building and we look at everywhere, all of the occupied space, whether doors are locked off, um, technical room, we start from the roof all the way down to basement level, if there's a basement, and we note everything uh, in terms of what you have in the building, what you need to do, and then we would go back, make recommendations. So once you implement those recommendations, then you know that you are on the right track to have a safe building, a fire safe building to occupy. Once the inspection is complete and your building meets the required standard, you will receive a building occupancy certificate, also known as a fire certificate. The Fire Prevention Division also sees to the retrofitting of fire hydrants. In 2007, we, we did a survey. That survey was a bit dismal, to be honest. It showed that we had just about 30% of all fire hydrants across the island working. We hired two teams of, of hydrant maintenance persons, and we placed one in the western section of the island and one in Kingston. In 2012, five years after, we did another survey, and that survey is showing us that we now have over 70% of the fire hydrants working. So that is really saying to us that the team that we have employed is actually going out there and doing the job that is required of them. The fire brigade is on the job to ensure that you are safe in the event of a fire, but they can't go it alone. Your help is needed. Don't cook and leave it unattended. Don't overload circuits. Don't introduce a whole lot of electrical equipment on, on, on systems that are not designed for that heavy load. Don't allow children that are not of the age of 12 and untaught to be fooling around with with, with, with fire in general and, and pretty much ensure that you have a plan in your home, in the building that you occupy. Ensure that the right equipment is there. Our message to the public is prevent, prevent, prevent. Once a fire starts, you need to call us. It is better for us to get on the scene and realize that you have already dealt with it than for us to get on the scene late. Because nobody likes a situation like that when we get there late and there's nothing much that, that we can actually do. For more information on the Jamaica Fire Brigade, visit their website www.jfb.gov.jm or call 922-2523 or 922-0007. That's all we have for you today, but be sure to join us tomorrow around about the same time right here on this station. We're also available at your leisure online. There's our website, jis.gov.jm, social media platforms such as YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And for those of you who are on the go, download our mobile app that is iOS and Android compatible. On behalf of the entire production team here at the JIS, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Thanks for watching. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.